Today, there's something new in America, a few politicians. Like Governor Chris Christie in New Jersey, Governor Rick Scott in Florida, Governor John Kasich in Ohio, a few who do make cuts. But there's another governor you may not have heard of, one who cut spending far more and who faced even angrier protests. This happened in Puerto Rico two years ago. Thousands of union members clashed with police for days. They protested in front of the governor's mansion because they were upset that their new governor proposed cuts far bigger than Wisconsin's. But the governor just smiled and waved. Luis Fortunio says he had to make cuts because Puerto Rico's economy was a mess. Not just a mess. We didn't have enough money to meet our first payroll. Agricola de Puerto Rico. <laughs> Fortunio's predecessors had grown Puerto Rico's government to the point that one out of every three workers worked for the state. And the state was generous about giving out contracts. They couldn't care. You know, the vendors will raise uh, the prices and they would just sign the contracts because it was not their money. It was the taxpayers' money. As a result, by the time Fortunio was elected, Puerto Rico was broke. Fortunio decided the government would handle money differently. We had to handle it as if it was our own money. The new conservative majority, the first in Puerto Rico in 40 years, passed Law 7, which shrank the state. So what'd you cut? Everything. I started with my own salary. I froze all salaries in across the, the government. People must have screamed. You let 17,000 workers go. If you can't pay their salaries, what are you going to do? People called him a fascist, and worse, they said he should raise taxes instead of cutting government. We've heard that before. Our taxes, as it is, were as high as they could be, actually much higher than most of the country. Uh, so what we've done is the opposite. He reduced corporate taxes from 35 to 25 percent. He reduced individual income taxes, and he privatized entire government agencies. Bring in the private sector. They will do a better job. They will do it cheaper. But government workers lost jobs. The unions hate you. Of course, they, they felt threatened. Uh, well, how they were threatened. You cut 17,000 jobs. Some of them wanted to work with us and lower the ex government expenses, and some of them did and saved jobs. Others refused and lost jobs. One fired government employee threw an egg at the governor. You they ducked. I ducked. <laughs> but bottom line here is, you know, they will try to push back at the right decisions because a lot of people will rather stay comfortable in the comfort zone and not do what needs to be done. The governor also cut his government's red tape. There was a lot of that, and that made it hard to open a business. 28 different business regulations and permits to open. Crazy. Today, you, we've got one regulation. That's it. Didn't bureaucrats say, oh, no, we need all these steps? Of course they did. There's a permanent government. A permanent government. That's common everywhere. Government employs hundreds of thousands of people, often just to shuffle paper, and those people lobby to keep their jobs. Like the police officers who did nothing but approve liquor licenses. There were 250 policemen and women handling that. Just liquor licenses? Just to, to guarantee that you didn't have a prior record, criminal record. This entrepreneur is mad because to sell marmalade out of her house, she had to spend a year getting government permits. She displays some on her wall. Even though her business is in her home, government rules required her to have an accessible bathroom. This woman's full-time job is helping businesses, mostly restaurants, wade through the maze. I said, you cook and I take care of the government. And don't worry. And now the new permit office says the rules are much easier. It's helpful to have everything in one place. Now she says it takes just two weeks to get permission to open a small store. How about a copy of Give Me a Break? This is my version of that. This one was in Delaware. You want to buy a Fox t-shirt? Delaware was said to be the most business-friendly state, but it still took me a week to get permission to do this. In Hong Kong, it took just one day. Thank you, sir. So the two-week wait in Puerto Rico is still a handicap, but it's much faster than it used to be. Do you hear now from businesses responding to that? Of course. Walmart is expanding significantly, and Costco. 600 construction permits have been issued in the last few months. 
This drug company is expanding. We're going to get more employees, up to 450 employees. Coca-Cola's begin construction on a Dasani bottling plant that'll employ thousands. There are a number of uh, restaurants are coming in from the mainland. Did you ever have a fired worker come to you and say, Governor, you know, I worked in the bureaucracy for 20 years. I would have never left. You fired me, and but now I'm glad because I'm doing Of this. course, people like that woman selling marmalade. She used to work for the government, keeping historical records. Being fired was hard. I feel bad because I have a big family. But now that she started her own business, she says getting fired was a good thing. I am my own boss. I am. So good, she named her company Law 7, after the law that fired her. It's good. For me, it's good. And now, if a bar wants a liquor license... Today you do it online. One clerk on a computer. Exactly, and that's it. So we have those policemen and women out in the streets where they, should, they belong. Still, lots of people are mad, especially the government workers who lost jobs. A recent poll showed that if Fortunio ran for re-election now, he'd lose 47 to 25 percent. Fortunio says, so what? I don't need this job. I, I'm doing it because I want to do it. What do you mean when you say, I don't need this job? I come from the private sector. I enjoyed what I was doing. I really enjoy what I was doing. You can go back to that. And I can go back to that. And over time, Puerto Rican voters may come to like his conservative government. Thank you very much. Ronald Reagan's popularity suffered when he made cuts. So did Richard Engler's in Michigan and Gary Johnson's in New Mexico. But all were later re-elected by big margins. I didn't care to look at those numbers because I knew how it was going to be. And I, I was in Washington in the President Reagan's first term. I know how unpopular he was during the first two years, but he was doing a lot of the right stuff. And at the end of the day, the numbers came back, and he won by a landslide. Fortunio's advice to leaders who want to shrink the state? Do what you need to do quickly, swiftly, like when you take off a Band-Aid, you know, just, just do it and, and, and move on to better things.